from this one. Wow, okay. The building must be leaning. Yeah. Wow. Wherever you're sitting, we are grateful that you have chosen to be here this morning. We're grateful that you have um, joined us for worship. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are in the midst of collecting our shoeboxes for Operation Christmas Child. And if you have one of those that is completed, you're welcome to leave it in the back um, and our ushers will bring them forward um, as part of our offering this morning. Um, so as we prepare for worship, let us stand and join together in the call to worship that's printed on the screen. Please stand. United in the spirit, we gather to worship our one true God, celebrating our diversity and differences. We become one body in Christ. We worship and praise God, who is over all and through all and in all. And now let us join together in singing our opening hymn, number 369, the United Methodist Hymnal, Blessed Assurance.
So let us encourage one another and worship our Lord Jesus Christ. We will worship and practice connection with community. Let us pray together the unison prayer. God, you know our hearts, you know our innermost secrets, you know we have faith and trust until we don't. Keep us in community, even when our lives are filled with doubt. You know we have hope and joy until we don't. Keep us near to you and one another, even when our lives are filled with despair. Keep us on the journey with one another, for we know you have created us to be in connection. We pray all of this with thanksgiving. Amen. You may be seated. Hi. Welcome to worship. My name's Sandra Monahan, and I'm your traditional worship lay leader. Um, as a lay leader, I'm here to help answer any questions you might have or help you get connected to any ministries here at Crozet UMC. Um, and if you're new here, I want to invite you to complete um, one of these little green cards. You'll find this in the back of the pew in front of you. Just place it in the offering plate. Thank you. Um, you're now invited to stand again <laughs> and share the peace of Christ with one another, um, at whatever comfort level you have if you're with health issues. Um, so please stand and greet one another. And as you do, we invite any children who are present this morning to join Pastor Christie here at the front for the children's message. Thank you. Message, and I wondered if we have any big kids who might want to come up and help me, help me. And then I actually, I think I'm even going to need like a big strong man. Okay, don't all jump at once. Come on. All right. <laughs> all right, we'll do it with this. We'll see how this works. Okay. Oh, good. Thank you for coming from the back, youth. Okay. So, hey guys, I have a question. Have you ever heard of a trust fall? No? Okay, I'm going to show you how it works. And so let's see, we're going to get you guys to stand here. Bart, I thought you were coming to help. <laughs> and then we're going to get Jack and Bart. Okay, yeah, okay, this works. Okay, then Bart's going to take my spot right here. Um, and so how this works is you guys make a line here. Jack, come over here. Okay. And Bart's going to go where I'm going. And I guess I'm going to demonstrate. So are y'all ready? <laughs> All right. So the way a trust fall works is I, there's a person, and that's going to be me. And I'm going to stand here and cover my eyes. And on the count of three, I'm going to lean back. But I'm going to depend on you all, all together, to come together and catch me. OK? Okay, so, so please come together, whatever you think. Like, I would say connection is good. Like, maybe, like, like this. I needed a lot of support here. Okay. I mean, you gotta catch me. All right. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, y'all are great! Okay, good, that's a trust fall. Would you like to try, try it? No, you don't trust them? Do you trust them? You want to try? Man, y'all are not very trusting. All right, you guys can go back. Um, so, the, so that was a little scary, I got to say. Would you be scared, scared if you were me? Thanks, guys. Um, you want, do, you, do you think you would trust them to catch you? Maybe. Yeah, um, trusting our community to support us is sometimes a hard thing to do. Um, but that is actually the message 
that we are learning about today, that being connected in community is part of how we grow in our faith. And so sometimes we might feel like, eh, I don't really want to go to church. I don't really need, need that today. But then sometimes when we're hurting or when we're sad or when we feel alone, those are exactly the times when we can come to church and people can support us. They might not catch us just like they did, but in a way they support us and keep us from falling. And so I hope that you will think of all of these people here as your community of faith who will support you even if you fall, even if you skin your knee, they're gonna be there to help you. They're gonna be like, where is the first aid kit? And so we can get a Band-Aid. But they're also gonna be here for the times when you have a question like, does God really exist? Or what is this whole thing Jesus is telling us? They've probably had those questions too, and so they're here to be supportive of you. And just like they support you, did you know that it's important for you to support them? How do you think you can support other people? Helping them up, yep. So if a friend falls, you can help them up. That would be what Jesus would do. I think you can also share a smile and share a hug with folks, because sometimes they might not see a cute little kid all week long, but they come here and they see you and that makes them so happy. So sharing your smile and your love and your hugs is an important way to show support of others too. So let's put our praying hands together and grown-ups, you can join us in the prayer. Dear God, thank you for Jesus and thank you for this community. Help us to support one another with your love. In Jesus' name we pray. so much and you can go back to your seat now. Thanks for coming up. And now I invite you to hear God's word through music. Our anthem for this morning is our song of fellowship and faith.
Let us pray. God, source of all light, by your word give light to the soul. Pour out on us the spirit of wisdom and understanding, that our hearts and minds may be opened. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our lesson for this morning is a brief one, only three verses, from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 23 through 25. Hear now these words. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I don't know about you, but I often spend time wondering why people come to church, what brings them to church, and what brings them back. Um, it for sure cannot be the message, the sermon, when we tell people that despite God's loving nature, we're all sinners, and that we can't live apart from God. And then we go on to say, don't worry, there's, there's hope for abundant life through Christ. And we call that the good news, the gospel. For folks, um, they sit and they listen, to a minister ramble on for 20 minutes, sometimes more, as we try to explain the good news and try to throw in a couple of half-humorous jokes. <laughs> we tell folks that it's their job to give up all of their luxuries and take up their cross and be crucified with Christ, dying to themselves daily and looking out for the interests of others instead of themselves. We explain that we should get busy in some sort of ministry of serving others with the church or maybe cleaning the church or fixing the church or visiting seniors or prisoners, and if not, shame on them for being pew potatoes. And then every week we pass around the baskets and we ask people to give up significant amounts of their hard-earned money to support God's work. People surely don't come for the benefits. Whenever people take on a new job, they're always interested in the salary and the benefits. And here we tell you, there is no salary and there are no benefits, but you're in it for life. And maybe, just maybe, God will reward you in heaven. So why, why do people come to church? Well, there are lots of reasons, actually, but I, I think that the thing that I have come to recognize most is that the number one reason people come to church is this, community. We need, we crave, we desire genuine, authentic connection with one another, and together we need connection with God. And I would argue that it's impossible to live a Christian life without the support of our siblings in Christ. That is precisely why God did not make us lone ranger Christians, struggling on our own, listening to recordings of sermons and watching religious programs and reading our Bibles and praying at home all by ourselves. Sure, that can be effective for a short time, but not sustainable for a lifetime. And that's the reason behind this 
worship series created for connection. This emphasis on connection is really all because God knew that we need each other to succeed on this earth. In fact, I'm pretty sure that God gave us each other so that we not only survive, but so that we might thrive. In our scripture passage for today, we find ourselves in the 10th chapter of the New Testament book of Hebrews. And the main message behind these three focus verses is the critical importance of being connected with community for those of us who draw our support from the fellowship of believers. So let's hear these three verses once again from Hebrews 10. Verse 23 is, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And then verse 24, let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds. And then verse 25, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. You know, every Sunday when we come through the doors to this sanctuary, we come bearing a burden, maybe two, maybe three, maybe more. These burdens often cause us to experience a wavering of our hope or our faith. And if you take a moment to ask yourself, what burden am I carrying this morning? You've probably already got it in your head, right? It doesn't, doesn't take long to come up with those things that cause us to struggle. Now consider this. When there has been a burden which has caused you to lose faith and to lose hope, who had a role in helping to support you, helping to sustain you, helping to bring you back to a steady place? I hope the person you're thinking of is someone from your faith community, someone maybe even from this congregation, because that is what scripture calls us to do, to be a community of support which connects us one to another, to nudge us, to hold on to hope. Being a community of support is our goal, and it is our challenge as disciples. Now we all face the times when we want to or feel compelled to withdraw and retreat from our church community. In my experience, there's really an infinite list of reasons that people may withdraw from a group or remain, remain present but not quite engaged. Sometimes when we're out of town, there's the geographical challenges of getting to our community of faith. Or sometimes there are other activities in our lives which compete for this very hour on Sunday morning. And sometimes there are tensions or differing opinions which cause people to avoid or neglect being a part of corporate worship. Sometimes we don't come when we're experiencing depression or anxiety or shame around our personal hardships. Sometimes we're ill, and sometimes our feelings have been hurt, and we've been misunderstood, even excluded by our church community. Maybe we don't come because we're struggling with our faith, and we're afraid to ask questions. In all of these times, especially in these times, we need the support of our community from which we withdraw. And if you're feeling or ever have felt any of these temptations to withdraw, you are not alone. And I encourage you to pray for strength to connect and engage. And as faithful disciples, it is critical that we both stay engaged as individuals and as a church community. Because it is in this community that we are called to create and be a safe and healthy and life-giving space for people in their darkest times. This should never be a place where we blame those who have chosen to leave the church or haven't shown up in six months and now they just walk through the doors. Perhaps, 
We don't know the reason why. Perhaps it was a harmful experience. Perhaps, perhaps it was a toxic environment. Instead, our responsibility is to work to change that story and to nurture and to care and to express concern for those who have been hurt by the church. Now, this passage from Hebrews is likely an address to a mixed group of Jewish and Gentile Christians who had firsthand experiences of hardship in that first generation of Christians, of persecution, actually, that likely made them withdraw from the community of faith. We know from earlier in this same chapter that they initially show courage and perseverance, but the writer is now concerned that their ongoing commitment to the early church would become difficult and that they would be scorned and looked down upon so as to take a toll on their faith. This passage highlights the importance of perseverance and meeting together for mutual encouragement for love and sharing of good deeds. This passage tells us that we must continue to pursue connection. It is in communities like this, in Crozet United Methodist Church, where individuals and community are sustained and strengthened. And it is Jesus who sustains us. Because as the text says, Jesus is faithful to his promises. Although there is so much in the world that seems hopeless or tries to offer us temporary fulfillment, we are called to persevere because we have hope of something, someone bigger, better, truer, and more ultimate. We know that in this community, Christ fulfills the purposes and the promises that he made, that peace is available where there is unrest, that there is grace when we feel empty, that there is comfort when we are ill or in pain, that we are a refuge in the valleys of life and of death, and that there are blessings even in the midst of struggle. So when we desire to withdraw or to retreat from our church community, these promises of Christ can be our anchor if we allow ourselves to lean in and connect. This passage nudges us to find connection with community, even when that community has flaws. Because it is through community that we find hope in Christ. God does not create us to do life and faith alone, especially in the face of a world that tries to pit us against each other and promote individualism. So gathering together for worship, despite lengthy sermons and repeated requests to deny all that seems good in the world, this gathering of community is a foretaste of God's fulfillment. Participating in a community reflects the hope of God's kingdom, and it is a privilege. As we make our way through the hills and valleys of life, we are called to practice all things named in this passage, encouraging one another to love and good deeds, meeting together, motivating one another. The existence of the church as a community is one that helps us, um, not only helps the community itself, but it is a bold witness to the world around us that there is something different as a way to live life, a different way of mutual love and encouragement. When we gather together in worship and study and in service, God's love and our good deeds are intimately connected. Sometimes we may be tempted to be Sunday morning only Christians, attending worship services, but not really engaging other parts of communal life or, or not allowing what we do on Sundays to affect the way we live the rest of the week. Of course, it's not intentional, it's not malicious, yet this short passage makes it clear that being the church with and for one another is about more than sitting in worship once a week. Amen. 
It is about actively embracing Crozet United Methodist Church's vision to love, grow, and go. To build relationships that sustain us and to extend God's love and encouragement to the world through our love and good deeds. So how might we practice this call to connection with community as we respond to today's message? Um, as I mentioned earlier, we've all had times when we wanted to withdraw, when we wanted to disconnect. We all know that feeling. We know what it's like. Maybe that's where we are today. Maybe that's where the person in the pew beside you is today. As a community, we are called to connect. Maybe we're here because we have pushed our si ourselves despite every struggle to get ourselves into the pew this morning so that someone will connect with us and remind us of Jesus' promises. Amen. Maybe we're here to reach out and offer a word of comfort without shaming, without um, judgment, but showing interest and showing that we value one another as a part of our community. May each one of us consider what we can do as we strive to convince one another that each person belongs to this community of faith. If you're new in this area, or even if you've been here for a while and it's, it's been a while since you've found true connection, consider this your official invitation to join one of our grow groups, to join one of our service opportunities, to connect here at Crozet United Methodist Church. As Sandra said earlier, our lay leaders have created this phenomenal plan for connecting with our visitors and our newcomers um, to help get everybody plugged in. But these efforts are never 100%. We need all of you to help in making that connection effective. So you're all encouraged to join this effort to reaching out to one another in love and connection. In my few short months here, what I have learned about this congregation is that it already embodies the kind of community described in Hebrews chapter 10. For example, I've seen how this community notices when people are missing and reaches out with love and compassion. I've seen how this community recognizes instances when hurt might have been caused, and they have sought out reconciliation with those who have been harmed. Of course, we are not all perfect, if only we were. There will always be room for improvement. So as we seek continued connection with community, may we all work to see Christ in each person and reflect God's love in our interactions. May we work to be a place where it is safe to bring our struggles and where we might encourage one another in hope to which the scriptures call us. Friends, today's bottom line is this. In our loneliness, we often feel compelled to retreat, to draw away from the church and the community. We often lean out towards disconnection. But we are called as believers to prioritize this time for worship and for small groups and for service and to build up and encourage each other in the faith. So that when, so that we can all lean in. We need to lean in to the community and know that we are safe and connected and supported. May it be so by the grace of God. Amen. 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 As we respond to God's word this morning, I invite you to stand and let us join our voices in the litany of response. Please stand as you are able. We are a cloth of diverse colors made from many gifts and graces. We are the people flowing forth from creator God.
surprising ourselves with the things which can be done. We are raw material for rewarding relationships as our lives interweave, contributing one to the other, holding each other firm when one is weak or brave. We are each worthy of being respected and cared for, essential to the pattern, skilled in our appointed tasks, sources of laughter and sharers of tears. We commit ourselves to work together, that one day this world may be a place where all people live in justice, freedom, and peace. God, three in one, God whose very nature is community. You call us to be people in community, yet we often feel alone and disconnected. We doubt that love can grow in relationships where tension and bitterness weigh us down and pull us apart. You know the strength of love and the power of community. So give us strength to seek connection, even when we don't feel like it, especially when we struggle and need to be lifted up. You know that it is in community where peace and love can be found. Help us to be faithful peacemakers, especially for those who experience despair and hopelessness. You know that there is infinite grace in this world. So help us to be generous and faithful. Oh God, you specialize in the impossibilities. You walked on water. You heal the nations. You forgive sins. You set the captive free. And you set us free from our own captivities. This morning we pray for people here who are sick, and isolated, who are filled with doubts, who wonder whether you exist and whether you are listening to our prayers, who wonder what this whole idea of community is about. We pray for people who doubt the purpose of life, who wonder whether to end it all, who face feelings of meaningless and despair. Even when we have that sinking feeling, O oh God, give us the wisdom to turn to you and to this, your community of believers. And give us faith, small as a mustard seed, so that we can be your faithful people, believing in your power to connect, believing in your power to embrace, believing that we can share your love and that it might reach everyone we meet and connect us in community and bring us to abundant life in your kingdom where there is always a place for each of us. This we pray in the name of Jesus as he taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. As we come now to the time in worship when we offer our tithes and gifts, I always like to share one way that your giving makes a difference. 
Um, just as in your homes and businesses, the church also must pay for these things called property insurance and liability insurance so that we are sure that we are protected from damages and to provide protection whenever there are injuries on site. Um, this past week, we made a quarterly payment on these insurances, costing approximately $1,700. Um, each year, that means that our total insurance costs around $6,700. Now, these are not very exciting expenses, are they? They're not nearly as exciting as Vacation Bible School or new worship and study resources. But as with any church, they are necessary for our congregation. And your giving makes it possible to be sure that we are protected in these ways, and every bit makes a difference. So as the ushers come forward, remember that you can give using the offering baskets or any of our online giving options. Let us now give back to God a portion of what God has given to us. together and sends us all out to do the good news of Jesus Christ. This we pray in his name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As we go forth into the week ahead to respond to God's word, there are many opportunities for you. Um, first of all, uh, we are seeking your talent. We are ready for the second annual Crozet's Got Talent. I know you all have your special talent, and you have the opportunity to showcase that um, as part of the talent show. Um, this is our second annual. Who had participated last year? Who attended? Come on, there's a few of you. Okay, there we go. Um, this year, uh, Crozet's Got Talent will be held on November 17th. Um, so you have, <coughs> excuse me, you have plenty of time to perfect your, your, um, your gig. So um, you can sign up by letting um, Gary know, our director of music and arts. And last year was a tremendous success. 
um, and we had a blast. They had a blast. I wasn't there, but I can't wait for the blast that's going to happen. Uh, um, it's a fun event, and you don't want to miss it, so definitely um, sign up to participate. Um, also, another opportunity coming up in October is Cookies for Kairos. If you like to bake, here is your opportunity. Um, the Kairos Prison Ministry will re-enter Fluvanna Correctional Center for Women um, to conduct a four-day program for the first time in five years. Um, and you're wondering how you can help. Um, they need about 24,000 cookies. 24,000. That's where you come in. The team needs help baking cookies. Can you bake three dozen? Can you bake six dozen? Can you bake nine dozen? However many you can bake, that is what we need. Um, they are, these cookies are a tangible representation of Christ's love, um, and we are grateful for any that can help. If you would like to sign up, um, there is an online sign up, or you can contact Mary Alice Gaskell, and she will let you know um, what you need to do and answer any of your questions. Um, this week is our last week of uh, listening sessions and house meeting for Crozet United Methodist Church's social justice ministry. If you have concerns about our community, this is an excellent place to come and share those concerns. Um, our social justice ministry connects with other organizations, interfaith connections in um, Albemarle County and um, Charlottesville and together um, we use our, our collective efforts to make significant change in the community. So you can come um, to the last one of the last two meetings. The first is today in just a few moments following worship um, in the fellowship hall. Bob, Bob Law is going to be leading that session or if today doesn't work for you Tuesday morning, uh, Tuesday or Thursday? Tuesday morning um, at 10 o'clock at the home of Fred and Carol Richard. Um, and so we hope that you will plug into this. If you are not able to meet it, you can speak with me or Bob or Leela Law and we will get you connected. Um, also, if you haven't heard about it, Rise Against Hunger is a fall mission opportunity for us. This is where we will hopefully raise $8,000 which will allow us to have um, kind of uh, freeze-dried food delivered to our site, and then we create an assembly line and package the food that will then go out to places all over the world where there is hunger. Um, that is happening on September, uh, October 19th, and it is our goal to raise the, the $8,000 prior to that day, um, and we are on our way. We've received some significant gifts, and we still need more to hit that goal so we encourage you to to give and also to participate um, that is a fun event that is um, it, it's available to people of all ages you don't have to have any special requirements to be able to participate and we hope that you will and then last but not least youth group this afternoon is um, here on site and middle school gathers at 4.30 and high school gathers at 5.30. If you have any questions, you can see Bart Isley in the back. I hope that you will find an opportunity to plug in and get connected uh, in the coming week. And as we conclude our time together, let us stand and sing together our closing hymn, number 348, Softly and Tenderly. <laughs>
May this be a place where we might all come home and be supported and be connected to the body of Christ. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.